I take this off? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh, Alice. I've been pleased to be your sister for 84 years. I hope I can get through this. Um, and when you got married, you brought us one of the greatest gifts we ever had as a family, and that is you brought us into the Baxendale clan. And now we have that large, loving family. Susan, Robin, David, Vicki, Paul, grands and grands, great grands. My first recollection of Dave was um, in the quarters at Pittsburgh. Pop was the DS, and um, Alice and Dave were an item, but um, Dave had to go through the obligatory asking the father for the hand. And he was in the living room, and uh, if anybody knew the godfather, my father, uh, that would have been a very trying event for David. And I am sure that he was very nervous about what he had to say. Meanwhile, the rest of us were hiding out in the kitchen pretending we weren't listening because we were going to have dinner after that happened. I'm sure Pop put him through all the paces and checked his pedigree. But he had it all. He started with it all. He had education and enthusiasm and, and endurance coupled with stunningly good looks, okay, and fabulous army stock in Lena and Ernie Baxendale. So all the, the boxes were covered for Dave. So Alice was in like Flynn, she's got it all, okay? And since then, we've had a marvelous experience together as a family. Education came naturally to Dave. You know, we heard about Springfield College and, and we know about his master's from Columbia. Um, he was at his best when he was teaching. He loved books, he read thousands of them. He kept them all. Oh well, some that he sold. But he read the scriptures thoroughly, front to back, year after year after year. On a recent visit to Top of the World, um, before they moved away, I was sitting in the back room with Alice and the phone rang and I heard Dave pick up the phone. And he was just sobbing. So I didn't know what was wrong. But it was the court officer telling him that his beloved book sale at the men's club had exceeded $3,000. He literally was sobbing over that event. It was so thrilling to him. I think it was his last time that he was going to do the men's book sale. But he loved those books. And he not only just loved what was in them, but he loved the opportunity of sharing their contents on a secondhand basis to anybody who would buy them. I wanted to hug him so much that day because I saw the kind of man he really was. Enthusiasm, we all remember his leadership. I mean, leadership came almost without, without even asking. As a kid, I remember you want to go on a lion hunt, and David would sit down, and reams of kids would be here, and we'd be patting on our legs and doing all the things that you do in a lion hunt. And essentially, a lion hunt talks about the perils and, and struggles of life as you go through them and meet them and then run back through them and, and make it, okay. So um, his enthusiasm was wonderful through that lion hunt and it lives with him now. He was a fabulous leader of young and old and he got him through all those lion hunt perils without a glitch. Endurance, you betcha he had it. Alice dreamed that he said, I'm not going because I am not going. Now, I'm sure that David was maybe thinking that at the time, because he never, ever refused to go anywhere. If the Army called him, he went. Now, you all know the Passaics and the Pattersons and the Cincinnati's and the Londons, the Jamaica's, the Santiago's, the Testings and the Triumphs. You'll get that in a bio. You might have missed in all those things wholly that he did that his obvious devotion to the Army he had a marvelous gift for affirmation. He, he could pick out people who just seemed to need it. And he affirmed both young and old, both important and not important. He even forgave Bill for underlining his favorite book, Every Word, in the page. Um, he was very angry. 
I thought we weren't going to get through that vacation. <laughs> but he, he, th he, he thanked us by borrowing Bill's sermon on uh, new patriotism, which Bill delivered in Asbury Park and seemed to be a winner, and he thought he could recycle that sermon. Well, in, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. So um, we felt forgiven by Dave for underlining his book. He endured the constant ribbing of our family because he was so frugal. Now, sometimes we call him tight, but mostly it was nice and frugal. We often joked about his $100 a day we're paying for this camp and it's raining. You know? And uh, there was 10 of us in one cabin pouring down the rain for a week, and all we heard was $100 a day. But kids, you got to forgive him for that. You really do because your dad never left a place in debt. And I'm telling you, there's a wonderful marker in the Salvation Army for a guy that can do that. So we forgive him his frugality. We won't joke about how tight he was because he did the work of the Lord. And I'm terribly proud of his affirmation. I can remember standing on the back deck in Casanova being officially commissioned as an auxiliary colonel. I got powder puff efforts. I got a big shield for my bathing suit and a bona fide certificate saying that I was an auxiliary colonel. Well, that, that made me feel good. And I thought, oh dear, my my pop in heaven, I'm an officer again. <laughs> Who would know? But uh, he's generous with everybody. He put Susan on stage when she was three. And every Christmas show from three on, Susan was like, the good ship lollipop. And we all wondered, oh my goodness. But let me tell you, Susan, that experience has enabled you to be the star in some very terrible issues. So don't, don't holler because he put you on the stage at three. And young David, the boy, we don't, we're not allowed to call him the boy anymore. He's David the doctor. But David the boy, you're handsome and smart, educated and a loving husband, and you got all of that from your father. And so we think of all those loving family situations and are so pleased to be able to share in them. We have Dave's want to go on a lion hunt in our heart right now. You remember that the lion hunt experience always ended with a big phew, we're safe. The metaphorical tigers and swamps and other perils that would scare us and hurt us, they were conquered, and we got home safely. Sue and Bill, Dave and Lori, Vicki and Gus, Paul, Esther, Chloe, Mitch, all the kids that can't be here, Pop is safe. He led his way through his sanctified life. He's safe with Jesus, and hallelujah.